So there are a few ways to be aggressive with your dinks. You can add some spin to it, so a slice, dinking, or top spin. You can go a little bit deeper towards your opponent's feet, or you can also make them move on the other side. So when you want to hit an aggressive shot, make sure you're in a comfortable position. So meaning you're comfortable, you're facing where the ball is on the other side, and you're super comfortable. A lot of the time, people, they end up crossing their feet, they're in a compromised position, they're not well positioned for the following shot, and they end up hitting an aggressive dink when it's not the right time to do so. So I'm gonna talk about the four different aggressive dinks. So the first one that we talked about, the slice dink, make sure when you're slicing that you keep your wrist firm. A lot of the time we see a lot of people, they're trying to do way too much with their wrist and they end up not making the ball over the net. So make sure you keep your wrist firm and it's again the follow through with your shoulder. You want to hit the side of the ball from high to low and then end up with the bottom of the ball. So you're going to start with the side and then follow through. As you're following through, you're going to hit the bottom of the ball. Also, make sure when you're dinking and you're being aggressive with your dink, that you really, if the ball's to your right, that you add, you put a lot of weight on your right leg, you follow through, and after you're done hitting, that's when you're going to recover towards the middle if you go cross court. So here, slice dink should look like this. Here, I'm also using my left hand to stay in control and balance here. Again, keep that wrist firm. Nice. The second one is the top spin dink. So that one, you want to make sure that you unlock your wrist for a second and then lock it for the rest of the shot. Okay, so your paddle is going to be below your wrist and then you're going to go low to high. So you want to start with hitting the bottom to the side, low to high. Unlock your wrist, lock it, and then follow through. Nice. And a little follow through, you don't need too much follow through. Nice, good. The third one, one way to be aggressive is if you notice that your opponents, they don't like to take balls out of the air, then it will be a great time to go more towards their feet because they're gonna end up taking extra steps to go forward and they might find themselves on their back foot. So this is one way to do it, to be a little bit more aggressive, go deeper towards their feet. I'm gonna just follow through a little bit longer to go a little bit deeper towards my practice partner feet here. Nice. By going deeper towards their feet, again, they might have their weight back and end up giving me more balls that I can actually pull the trigger on. Another way to be aggressive is to always mix the ball up to where you're going to hit it. So if you mix your dinks up, they never know where you might end up hitting your dink, but you're also creating them having to move, right? Nobody likes to move that much, but um, when you're playing pickleball and you want to be more aggressive with your dinks, make sure you always hit different spots on the other side. So this is one way here where we're going to try to hit different spots by moving the ball around. Nice. Nice. Try to hit different spots on the other side really try to make each other move and create pop-ups, opportunities to pull the trigger. Nice. Good. As we're trying to also recover towards the middle after every single shot we hit cross-court. 